Uh, Justin. Yeah. Do the song. Oh my God. So good. Stop. What? All right. So check this out. You want to win something for free? Of course you do. That's why you tuned in, right? Besides the awesome show. Here's what you do. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Make it a great comment. Tell us a story. I don't know. Do something cool. If you impress Doug and he picks your name, you'll get free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Free access to an incredible program. Also, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. You have to do those things to win anything. And if you don't, we don't like you. Do it all. Do all those things. Also, before we start this podcast, uh, we are running a sale. MAPS Aesthetic is 50% off. And our Extreme Fitness Bundle, which is multiple workout programs put together, is also 50% off. Look, if you want to get fit, go check those out. They work really, really well. We created those programs. They're not crappy programs. They actually work. You can look them up at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but make sure to use the code MAYSPECIAL for that discount. <laughs> Enjoy the podcast. Hey, do you guys ever have a friend that, you know, okay, you're friends with, but just because they're they're so nefarious or uh, what's the word? Um, they're such douches or whatever that simply hanging out with them is wow. something that your girlfriend or wife is like, no, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you go to you know breakfast. Yeah. I don't want you around that guy. Have you ever had a friend like that? Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'd label him as a douche because of that. I think that he's uh, my- um Infamous. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you're searching for the word, but that, I mean, it's your friend, right? So you're not calling him a douche. You, you know what I mean? He's problematic. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. that one friend that your girl is like, Gets listen, you in trouble. Yeah, yeah like, like, like she knows. Like, yeah. I don't care what you do. I don't even, yeah. you, you can't even, you know, drive him to the airport. I don't want you around this person, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He's the one I always used to use as an excuse of like, oh, well, pff, you know, Joe made me do it. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, he's that guy. You know who's like that? The worst in the world? Who? Epstein. So you hang out with Epstein, whoa, whoa, whoa. you get divorced. Whoa. Whoa. Do you guys hear I about love Bill? How you set me up for this. Do you guys see what happened yes, with the Bill I, Gates thing? I did, dude. There's like, there's a couple conspiracies floating around, and I think oh, I brought it up a little bit, but I didn't realize like uh, there's actually something that is interesting. I want you guys to speculate on just okay. a little bit, right? All right. So oh, I love speculating. Apparently, uh, you know, they had actually planned on. Well, Melinda is her name, right? Melinda yeah. Gates had planned with a lawyer to go through with a divorce in 2019 mm -hmm. uh, based off of like his relationship with Epstein and was uncomfortable with it, didn't like that old thing. Like, he apparently was, this, was on his private plane okay, okay, to yeah. his, okay, his okay, island. This is, okay, this, so this is 2019. Uh, also, Jeff Bezos uh, filed for divorce 2019. That whole thing went down. Obviously, we knew like his pictures, dick pics, and all that got leaked. And yeah, yeah. kind of led in that direction. Mm -hmm. So that one wasn't like as you know spicy. Uh, he also hung out with Epstein. He also hung out with Epstein. Mm -hmm. So, he, so you have that. Um, I feel like this is the six degrees from Kevin Bacon. It's almost impossible. <laughs> yeah, with so Epstein's connected. To I'm wondering if anybody in here knows about any kind of a loophole in terms of being able to liquidate stock. Uh, by getting a divorce and, and how that works in terms of being able to acquire, uh, you know, that and turn that into cash uh, without causing any kind of hysteria in the market where it drops all of a sudden. Now everybody's like, mm. oh, what's happening? All this stock is, you know, he's, he's taking it out uh, versus just getting a divorce kind of diffuses that. Interesting. So, so for example, I'm going to paint a story. You tell me if this is what you're talking about. Uh, let's say I, I, I'm a politician or I own a company or I, I work with a company. You just pretend like you're Bill Gates. And I know. Okay, let's pretend. <laughs> yeah, just hypothetically. Yeah. I'm Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and I know Computers. that- Computers. Yeah, I know that there's going to be some bad news coming out about a company yeah. that I'm tied to. And I've got, let's say, I don't know, $50 million tied up there. But I know that the news is going to come out you know, next year. It's going to tank my shit. Mm. And if I sell it all and then the news comes out, uh, SEC is going to be you know, up my ass, right? Mm -hmm. So if getting a divorce course. getting a divorce is a way to say, look, we liquidated it because we had to split it and this is right. what we agreed to do. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Uh, did he do that? Um, well, it looks like that. Oh, well, what company? What company was about to tank or what? Give me- Yeah, what did he do? Yeah. Oh no! I'm, I, they're speculating this in terms of like, uh, like, uh, like what happened with the pandemic and everything mm -hmm. else, and like being able to kind of like prepare, uh, you know, their assets and gain and acquire assets before everything oh, the market crashed. Interesting. 
Yeah. yeah. But I mean, divorce is expensive. So, you, I mean, it must be a big win. Because, and I, and sure. also, like, how much of his, do you know, do we know how much he, his stock that he sold off then for this? Do we know? Do we have any idea how much was liquidated? It was, it was a hefty amount. I, I'd have to have Doug pull that up. Yeah, Doug, mm. find out how much was liquidated. I didn't even, I didn't know that's what happened. And what stock? I, I, just, I just thought you just like. I think it was Microsoft. Oh, oh okay. really? Was it not? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be my guess. Mm. Interesting. Well, the part that's real is that she definitely, this is this was mainstream news. Uh, Melinda had issues with his relationship with Epstein, voiced it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this was something that she talked to a divorce lawyer apparently about when it happened. So mm. they, they're, they're, now the speculation is that this is the main driver behind uh, their divorce. Well, and, and everybody was, and, and this is where I didn't want to go too conspiratorial because everybody's already been hammering him because he's such a vocal mm -hmm. uh, proponent of the vaccines. And like, why was he at the forefront of all this? Like immediately, you know, like the, he has already had all the systems in place to basically, you know, sell his his vaccine hmm. out there well that that part doesn't necessarily because he's always kind of been like, he, he's been preaching that for a long time for a long yeah, time yeah. yeah that that part doesn't but the, the part that is weird is that he did have a relationship with epstein he said he just talked to him one time because he's looking for investors mm -hmm. but they're saying he was on his plane and whatever and you know who else was on epstein's plane a lot who? bill clinton yeah. Oh, we know. Yeah, that. We, we talked about that. Oh, yeah. yeah we've yeah. seen those. We've all seen the records. Like they're a ton. out there. They're public. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. Well, dude, he had a. And, and Bill isn't exactly known for being. <laughs> <laughs> That's old news. He's the though. guy I mean, that he was. He's, a, not, he's not the most faithful guy in the world. Yeah, he had a picture of him in his in his in his place. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on, uh, you got to be pretty close. I mean, imagine I, we're pretty close. Wait, wait, I, you I don't did. Have, yeah. I don't have a painting of one of you fuckers in my house. If you did, that'd be weird. It would be dress high heels. Yeah, I imagine if someone found that, that'd be like, whoa. Hey, hey, what is that? That is such a power move to have like one of your friends on the wall and dress in like high heels. Yeah. Like, imagine if you went over to Adam's house, yeah. right? And yeah. like you go to the bathroom and there's a painting of you, <laughs> but like wearing a dress like, or something. I'm going to do this. You yeah. know, just as blackmail. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. like, I'm like, bro. I'm release this, you guys. I, hey, I like you, but we have to fight uh, now. This yeah. is a very yeah. weird, yeah. <laughs> very weird thing that's going on. That is weird. And you know, it, it is sad because they're, it's such a, uh, a visible thing because they're celebrities and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, they were married for so long. It is strange to get divorced after after being married for so long, yeah, that's not, it's way rare, right? Divorces typically happen when people are like in the beginning of their marriage. You know, that's yeah. what the statistics say, right? I don't know. I don't know what that. What that? I think there. I think it spikes again after the kids are out of college and stuff too, though, right? I think that is another. Time Actually, you're right. You're right. right because people stay together, and then when the kids leave, they're like, "All right, now yeah. we're we don't have to be together anymore." That's Spe true. Speaking mm -hmm. of weird stuff, did mm. you see the? I don't know the name of the girl, but she is doing. She's on OnlyFans. Oh. And is selling her a video of her live birth. Is that right? You might give I'm me gonna that pull, right? I'm going to pull it up right now, dude. Yeah. Wow. So is, this is, is there a demand. For yeah, this I'm going to pull content? this up. So only star fan, uh, only fan star. Excuse me. Plans to live stream birth for twelve thousand dollars and has offers to sell her breast milk. Hmm. Oh my god. What in the hell? She's the only fans mom from the UK. Her parents are so proud. Oh yeah. boy. 12, okay, is it twelve thousand a person to come in and watch? Is I have one? no idea. It says Carla Bellucci is her name. So a thirty-nine year old mom to be. I mean, Doug, I'll send you this link here, so you can pull it up because we, we got to take a look at it and see what she looks like because uh, that's a lot of money to watch someone do. Yeah, something like that. I'm <laughs> texting it to you right now. Yeah. What I want to know the kind of dudes that are like excited about that. Yeah. Idea. So Carla Bellucci, thirty-nine year old mom to be, recently decided to cash in on her growing baby bump through fetishes so people with fetishes ah, with this mm -hmm. on only fans okay like you know i get the whole like fetish stuff but 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 like the the live but, birth part but of it bro, where, where does that come from bro if i i don't know like, dude. like pregnant, if you're, pregnant ladies you know i get that you know there's, there's, there's some right there. appeal yeah i mean she's attractive yeah okay you know. i don't okay it says for twelve thousand. is it twelve thousand per viewer is that because that could be a lot of money this chick's gonna make i don't know wow i mean maybe yeah, you know? I, mean, I assume, right? I, dude, that's weird, bro. If that's yeah. your thing, you're into like women having babies. Okay, it does, <laughs> what are you doing? Click dude? on her Instagram and tell <laughs> what me what are you doing, bro? <laughs> how many click, of these people are? Click out her there. Instagram and tell me how many followers she has. I want to know. I don't. I don't uh, know who this is. Like, I don't know her. Hundred seventeen thousand. Oh, that's it. Okay, so she, well, no, that's that's it. Like, I'm. Uh, that's still not as I thought she'd be someone like. Well, bro, you only need th okay. This is the I guess the beauty and the bad about the internet is if you want to find people that are into 
I don't know, smelling your feet or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You'll find them on the internet. Like yeah. it exists. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you guys, like our fallback is that, right? right. So if this doesn't work out, Justin's just only slap fans. you with steaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm really into that. <laughs> balloon porn or something like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Folding up balloons. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's something. I bet you that's something. I'm sure, I'm sure it is yeah. too. I that's bet you things that you know, people are Clown into Clown porn. It's huge. Weird. weird. Yeah. That is weird. She's yeah. pretty though. She's a pretty woman. Yeah. And uh, I mean, look, pregnancy, I, I, I found my wife extremely beautiful when she was pregnant, but it was me. It wasn't necessarily that's because- your wife. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's different. But it wasn't like a, a fetish. It was more like she's a mom and she's, you know, that, so that was, that's always a, you know, for me, that's a, yeah. a good thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I, yeah. yeah. I got opinions that I'll keep to myself. Hey, so you, did you dry scoop that, uh, that pure there? I, I mean, I can. Are like, you going to do that? Like, like who was talking about this? Uh, was it in the comment section or like, cause we brought this up. Yeah. Like, somebody, somebody was like, oh, like, oh, it's so on. hardcore. Hold on. Have you ever dry scooped a uh, powder? Yeah, dude. You have? Oh, all right. yeah. Well, all if the you time. choke right now and blow out powder, probably die. Yeah, you, you, guys, probably you guys probably will. Wash, you guys but, wash it yeah. down. Okay. Oh. Don't breathe. Oh, God. Mm. Don't, <laughs> don't sneeze. Mm. Dude. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea, though, of a pure with a rock star. That sounds I mean, like, together. That sounds like a good time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I'm I mean, not used to it, but you know what? Like, let's, let's give it a little kick. So, it, okay. Now, that's the first time that Organifi has sent us the. The, yeah, so instead of the individual packets, it comes in a little. Did thing. they always have that? I didn't know they had that for pure. I think it's brand new. Uh, I was gonna say I don't think they had that before. It does. It tastes good though, doesn't it's it? It's good. Yeah, it's not even like a bad thing. Yeah, like, I, you're not tough for doing that. No, well, I mean, I used to try. It's I, very oh, Tang esque, mm -hmm. right? Don't you think it kind of tastes tang? like Tang? Remember mm -hmm. Tang? Yeah, well, it's better. It tastes uh, is better. Tang I wonder tang. how many people watching tang was right like now. Sour. I know. Is they're, tang they're thinking you're talking about Poon Tang. Yeah, Tang was a drink, an orange drink that actually. Did you know they sent that up to the? Was it the moon or up into space? Yeah, it was, like it was one up the, first. the astronauts had it. This was like so back in the day they would sell Tang as like a health drink. Did you guys know this? No, I didn't know it was that. Bro, look up Doug. Look up Tang if it exists. <laughs> Let's look at the ingredients. I'm sure it still exists. No, it's an or it's like an orange yeah. powdery drink. It was you, so good. You mix it in water. It's and like it's yeah, it's like a crappy version of Sunny D. Yeah, yeah. and they right. and they would sell it as like this health thing. It's basically cool. There it is. Yeah, look at See? the still going, still it, make it. It's astronaut. What's the ingredients? Doug? Walmart. I'm trying to Find that it's hard to see. Well, of course, the first ingredient ingredient is uh, sugar. Yeah. Then fructose. Okay. okay. More sugar. Citric acid. Okay. Vitamin uh, C. I'm trying to read this label. It's kind of on an angle here. Yeah. I, I think oh. the rest is just a bunch of uh, it's just other a, stuff. It's guar just guar gum and other things. It's just a tasty guar orange colored uh, drink. But That's they used it. to advertise it as like this healthy thing, like vitamin C yeah. thing. It's well, yeah, it's all about the astronauts too. They they were selling it because the astronauts that supposedly were drinking Tang. It yeah. Is it exclusive to Walmart? Is that what it is? They just have it. Maybe they uh, own the brand now. No. no, I don't think so. Do you, no. Speaking of Walmart, uh, I saw a funny clip of Shaquille O'Neal. I didn't know this story. I thought that was interesting. Um, he holds the uh, daily record for the most money spent at Walmart in a day. No. Spent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he spend? He's seventy thousand dollars. The hell did he buy for at Walmart? That's a lot of shit. I yeah. know. Well, he tells the story. It was. I want to believe it. I believe it was when he uh, went to Miami. I, what he was traded to another team. He goes there. He has a house. I spent about seventy thousand at Walmart in one night. I spent so much. Amer American Express thought my credit card was stolen. True <laughs> <I'm> story. <sorry. laughs> Uh, but nothing was set up. So he had nothing. So he literally in one night drove, he said it was like at two o'clock in the morning or something crazy. It was like really late at night and went there and just TV, toothbrush. I mean, everything you could think of that you would want, four TVs, laptops, computers. I mean, he needed all the you, wow. all the stuff for the kitchen. He needed everything for the bathrooms, like yeah. all in one shot. 70, He's such 000. a philanthropist, too, right? Like, he, he is. Does, he does so many cool things that nobody knows about. Yeah, do you yeah. know that he does that? That's something really cool about Shaq that I like. Like, I think he says every day he does like a, a deed like that where he finds a random person and like just like gives money to him. And he really? doesn't talk about, like, he was only, only did I know about this because somebody asked about this and he doesn't post it on his social he doesn't promote it he just does it's something that he's done for wow. a long time he was just at uh the jonas brothers like I saw that did you see that or he, yeah he was in the crowd he's yeah. like yeah, yeah. Like, he's like a real fan now I, yeah. I don't i don't know a ton about basketball but wasn't he the one of the first guys that kind of ushered in the era of like the big uh, muscular strong kind of basketball player was that kind of was he I know he was a part I mean, of that, in terms right? Of being like this this huge center that was just dominating. Because yeah. wasn't there like an, a period of time yeah, when bro, basketball a, players changed? He was, a, he was a seven foot, almost three hundred pound. Yeah, he was immovable. You yeah. know, you're not gonna yeah 
there, I mean, before him, there was nobody of that size and weight yeah. that could play basketball. I mean, there, he was the yeah. All the tall guys were really skinny. Yeah, exactly. If you look, go back and, and look at the basketball history, like anybody that was you know seven foot range, they were lanky right? mm -hmm. and really really lean, right? Where he was like the first, yeah, like, like Dr. J or like whatever, beefy yeah. and. For like someone of that size, yeah. I mean, he's obviously he's been teased forever in his career, but I mean, oh. his footwork at, at that size is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. to watch normally when you watch like a, a a center and you know playing basketball, they're like in slow motion when you compare them to like a guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Shaq's footwork and speed for his size was incredible. Now yeah. he looks slow to us when you compare him to all the other pros that he's playing, but you know if he were to get in playing, well, court, when you're that big, dude, uh, he dominated in the paint. Yeah, like, so so him and uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the other guy? Kobe? That he, no, 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 no. That, what's that show that he's on that you showed us? Oh yeah, Charles Barkley. Him and Barkley oh. are such great chemistry. I love that. What amazing, a great, amazing chemistry! What a great yeah. duo. Yeah. I mean, they, they they mess with each other. They laugh. You can obviously tell that they obviously have respect. They've for won each other. so many Emmys for that show. It's so good. Yeah. What, now, what er, did you pull up? It was like a, a, Ernie, a highlight clip of that show. Yeah. So I, I love. I mean, I I honestly uh, when I look at content to try and emulate or what I would like us the vibe to feel like very similar obviously mm. they're in basketball we're in fitness but the dynamic between uh you know ernie and kenny and Shaq and uh and charles is i feel similar to ours the only difference between us and their i mean there's a lot of differences but <laughs> the, 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 you know, i'm comparing we myself look to very similar. yeah, yeah right. i mean if you there's can't one. even tell the difference yeah, right, right. <laughs> me next to Shaq, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm a, who's yeah. who i'm a little I mean, less black we this, look other dominating that, we're athletes. Exactly. We're, we're, no yeah. i can fit in his pocket yeah. well i mean we our our stuff is uh you know, we don't have anything scripted. We don't have the content that we prepare is normally one of us brings brings the content where uh, the difference is Ernie actually really is the mastermind behind that. Like he and they just riff off of his. Yeah. Structure. So he really he he steers that whole thing. And, and a lot of people, unless you've seen like Ernie's documentary on ESPN, you may not know that that you just think, man, they're just so unbelievable. The 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 the, the dynamic between them, the conversation, the way mm -hmm. it flows. But Ernie really has like a huge he he has thought out the whole entire show has all these notes and then he kind of like you know he throws the crumbs out there mm -hmm. and lets them kind of battle and talk shit and have fun and then if they start to trail off he reigns them all yeah in. you'll yeah. see he reigns them in or he'll direct the conversation over to Kenny to kind of get it to another subject mm -hmm. like it's really brilliant when you look at it but, it, it but doesn't it, feel that way but it wouldn't work without their chemistry you know what i mean oh of course yeah that's that's what makes it fun to watch is when you see a group and they have really good you know i chemistry is, I, I feel like it's a word that we use because we don't know how to define you know like oh it's just chemistry right but yeah. i don't know what other word to use well you call it the x factor that's what you like to call yeah, it. I, I mean, call Justin the X factor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah he's a, you know how annoying I got, we'd be? I got my own symbol. You know how annoying we'd be without Justin, Adam? Well, yeah, we would we would be a lot less liked. That's oh for my sure. God. Yeah. No, be, no, no, <laughs> we'd no, have no, some no. serious haters. We, we, Education. Yeah. I did we did that one uh, only the last episode we did uh I at the at the beginning. This was on YouTube. So on our YouTube channel, we often give away uh like you know, often programs, every episode. Every episode, yeah. right? And so what I said in the beginning was, hey, leave us a comment and tell us who your favorite host is, right? Totally unprepared for everyone to say Justin. It like, was not the case, bro. Dude. There was plenty of Sal in there. And 90%. Adam. I think people felt bad after seeing all the Justins. They're like, yeah, yeah, like, let's throw them a crumb. Yeah. We I, like the I had a couple gay guys that said me. That's about all I had, I think. Well, I mean, well you are, else. I mean, desirable. You are a, yeah. you are a, yeah. what, are they, what are they Tasty is what I think I've heard. A, a yeah. snack? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A big yeah. snack. Delicious. You're not a little yeah. snack. You're Something like that. It's one of those descriptors. You know, speaking of of snacks, and we talked about Tang earlier, I can't get this out of my head. Do you guys, do you guys <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, Great transition. Yes. Yeah, there you was. go. Do you guys uh, know one of the first like nutritional drinks that was sold like to 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 the mainstream? Slim Fast? No. No, that's a diet drink, but yeah, that's a good one. That one's been around for a while. Okay. Nutritional drink? Yeah, like it's this is good for you. Drink it, give it to your kids. Got nutrients and nope. whatever. Probably high C or some shit. Oval team. Like. Oh, oval oh, team. I knew oval that. Team, Damn it, bro. I knew that. You guys remember that? Yeah. yeah. Do they even make that anymore? They do, I think. Yeah. What the hell is Oval Team? I mean, all of a sudden, like Nestle Quick came right after that. Is oh well, that's know, they weren't even pretending. Yeah, but they weren't pretending to be no, healthy. They're, they're just like, yeah, we're gonna add more. I used to sugar. Use, I liked. I was one of the few kids that liked strawberry Nestle. I didn't like the chocolate. Give me the strawberry one. Oh, yeah. yeah, and all you're my friends were like, kids. Yeah, they were like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. 
No, but Oval, like, like Oval Team was weird, bro. It was like, what is it? It's like malt something drink. Yeah, yeah chocolate malt. It's like a milkshake. But I mean, what's it's it like made chocolate with? Chocolate milk. Yeah, it does yeah, taste like It's that. not made with chocolate it's milk. It's not made with cocoa or something? I imagine it's cocoa. It's no, derived from that. It's no? made with like malt. What's malt, yeah, Doug? What, what I mean, is this malt? is Doug's generation. Yeah. He should be the one that knows. Doug, had, he, Doug, Doug got the decoder ring when he was a kid, so yeah. he'd get the free uh, you know, Oval Team. It's when like the same substance they put in those Whoppers. Remember those candies? Like malted milk balls. Is that what that is? Yes, malt. It comes from wheat, I believe. The Oval Team does? Yeah, sweet. So you're just, drinking, you're just drinking gluten? Yeah, <laughs> straight yummy yeah. gluten. Yeah. I'll look it up. Or maybe barley. It could be barley. Let me Wh- double check. Which is also packed full, I think, packed pack full of gluten. See, when I was a kid, that was the first supplement that I took. I saw- it Was it Ovaltine? Yeah, because I saw- see, I've always been a fanatic for My shit My mom like this. loved it. She'd take her pills with it and everything. Yeah, yeah. so I was, as a kid, I remember, you know, I was young. I'm talking about like 10, right? And I'm already thinking like, what can I take- to get jacked at 10 years old. Mm. This one, I was eating spinach because of Popeye or whatever. Wow. Yeah. So I, right, I, I got the low down on this when you're ready. Yeah, sure. tell us. Go ahead. So malt is germinated cereal grain that has been dried in a process known as malting. The grain is made to germinate by soaking in water and is then halted from germinating further by drying with hot, hot air. Various cereals are malted, though uh, barley is the most common. So. Wow. Mm. And what great marketing. This is good for you. Really? Yeah, not really. But when I was a kid, again, I, I remember I saw what was I? I saw something. It was an old TV show, and the kid was drinking Ovaltine, and he's like, "Oh, it's good. You know, it makes you strong or whatever vitamins." So I'm like, "Mom, yeah. I want Ovaltine. Yeah, please." <laughs> and I would take it every morning at ten years old. Really? Yes, dude. Wow. I'd go downstairs and I'd mix up my own, thinking this is my first supplement, and uh, I'm taking it like this. I is- drank two gallons of milk uh, a week. Like that was my thing. Really? Yeah. yeah, I was really into drinking milk. And like, I'm sure you have no dairy intolerance. None, at all. none so, at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, I bought in wholeheartedly yeah. that you know the milk was does a body good. His his, uh, his uh, pasty poop is not <laughs> not a result of a dairy intolerance. Listen, you guys, it's, you can it's you an can an complete denial. <laughs> yeah, you could build it's an a, essential <laughs> uh, nutrient. You know, in my diet, you could build a hut with Justin's poop. <laughs> What's that stuff called? Adobe. Gross. It's like Adobe. Right? Right? You can like build an yeah, Adobe hut. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. What did you build here in the wilderness, Justin? Thanks, milk. Yeah. It was for my, it was for my, my poop. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to take a, a, a crazy uh, left turn here and tell you about something terrifying. That's right. Just so you know. Oh, uh, this is, well, if you're watching <laughs> he's, he's, this way. He's like, take a right, right yeah. turn here. Hold on. Let me do the thing. Everybody was following <laughs> left. <laughs> left, so left, did left that. right. Okay. Remember that when you were a kid? Yeah. You do the L. Anyway. No. Uh, did you know the Russians, ready for this? Damn Russians, man. Hmm. They developed a tsunami nuke. Have you heard of this? They called Poseidon. No. Yeah, so they named it Poseidon. This is what it does. It literally cruises along the bottom of the ocean. So and it's just like blows up right before land. And then it just it causes like a tsunami wave. Massive tsunamis to annihilate with radioactive water to Shut annihilate up. coastal towns. You know, this is how Godzilla. There's a little bit of brilliance in that. Like, it, you know, <laughs> Bro, they, I mean, create Godzilla. <laughs> What a, what the fuck? I feel like Russia sometimes. They, by the way, you know the Soviet Union had by far the biggest nuke of all time. I think it was called the Tsar Bomba, T S A R B O M B A, which was something like thousands of times or more powerful than than uh, than Hiroshima. Yeah. So I feel like Russia's strategy is like, here's a deal: if you attack us, we'll kill everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is a pretty effective strategy because right. nobody wants to fuck we with the guy. The, we want the biggest bomb. Yeah, you're not going to mess with the guy that's like, I mean, you can fight me, but then we're all going to die. So is that, stati- I've heard people say that we have nukes that could blow up the world seven times over. Yeah, not single nukes, but, but sorry, not single nukes, but rather collectively. Collectively, we have so uh, many nukes mm. that we could totally annihilate the earth uh, many, many times But over. not a single nuke that could blow up the earth <laughs> over seven. I don't think anybody's made Haven't it. you heard that before? Haven't you heard that statement yeah. before? Someone said, that, oh yeah, we, you could blow up the earth seven times with the amount of nukes that we have. But it's it, collectively, not Col- collectively, a, not a single one. Not a single one. I don't know what the I don't know what the value would be in something like that. Are we that. still testing these things in the ocean? That was always like uh, mind-boggling to me. Yeah, it was like Bikini Beach or, or Bikini Island uh, or whatever. The Bikini Atolls. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we just tested so many nuclear weapons and, and hydrogen bombs out there, and it's mm-hmm. like, dude, like that stays in the environment forever. So I was, when I was a kid, I was fascinated by nuclear weapons. I thought they were so interesting, and I would watch, you know, I'd, I'd try and find pictures and whatever. And now they have, they've released all these testing videos that were classified, so you could actually go on YouTube and pull up uh, videos that hadn't were classified before of nuclear explosions. Mm-hmm. 
and it's I mean it's fascinating, but it's terrifying. Oh, like yeah. these, like it looks like I, I don't even especially understand. watching it in slow motion. Yeah, you know, like they have some clips like that now that you can watch. You know how that cloud forms and then yeah. just engulfs everything. And you know what the strategy is with these things? I know I'm getting all nerdy on this, but they they the strategy they figured out early on wasn't to land a nuke on land to blow up. It was to 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 have it detonate. A, you know, a couple thousand feet from the ground because mm -hmm. it causes more damage. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It spreads yeah. out for that's a that's scary stuff, dude. Yeah, yeah a little terrifying. Justin, yeah. I heard you're. Uh, are you starting the uh, adenovore diet? Is that what I heard? Adenovore. Yeah. yeah, I am. I don't exactly know what it is, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Trying to mimic it, so you were eating meat. Were, were you eating whatever like, Adam gives you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just feeds me. Just yeah. like what do I eat I now, Adam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I heard you talking uh, to the wife about what you were wanting for dinner and stuff like that. It sounds like you're you're back to the all meat thing or what? Yeah, I was I was sort of waiting that out, but I I wanted to to get back on, on the shred. Well, yeah. I didn't. That's why I wasn't gonna you know bring it up. because yeah, no. you know I was doing my own version. So <laughs> you know the the I don't you know. He's doing the well, Justin Devor. Yeah, but I mean, you know what that means, Adam. Yeah. It actually sticks to it. That's what it means. That's <laughs> and it sticks to the toilet. I'm going to beat you guys some punch. <laughs> um, now, what's the motivation? Is it because we're going to Hawaii? Yeah, there's that. And it's just like, uh, again, like mm -hmm. I, I, I mentioned things. And when I mention things, I follow through with things. Yeah. So you're going to see some six-pack six action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> that's how we'd put it on air, dude. Yeah, you better. Bring. When you guys wow. go to Hawaii? Uh, July, June. So yeah, know. whenever your vacation was, we yeah. we planned around that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah July. Yeah, it's yeah, like the yeah. second week of July. Yeah, so. It's gonna be fun, man. It'll be fun to hang out. Damn, yeah. you're gonna get shredded. I can't hang out with the shredded. What Justin. are you telling? Like you're not. You yeah, know, but that's like, what I'm saying. And then you get shredded. Now forget about it. It's like it's I'm not. Even, that's mm. stupid. You messed up. Yeah, man. I don't like that. Yeah, you showed your cards too early. I'm, I'm motivated. Any, uh, they any, don't even know. Any any nerves at all around the the six and a half hour flight with the little one or what? Ooh, now yes, because <laughs> when I flew to Vegas <laughs> for oh an God, hour, that was this. that was a little bit of a like okay, there was a few nightmare situations. Oh boy. So six and a half hours, yeah, that might be rough because you got to feed the baby, you got to do all. This, he's probably gonna poop at some point. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, yeah I had a rough one when I brought my my son like to to. Uh, Hawaii it was I had to walk up and down the aisles the whole time it was the air pressure and like he already had kind of a cold and so it was miserable but I don't think that's going to happen. Either. I hope yeah. not, man. Let's that's just not put that out there. You know, that's one of the things that bothers Max more than anything else is the is the air pressure on his ears and stuff. When we really? go, just going yeah. to Tahoe, the climbing the elevation to go to Tahoe. Have him get on the boop. Uh, well, no, we, we're driving, right? So what we uh, do is have, we feed him something or give it, like if yeah, he's chewing, he's, yeah, the chewing will help it a little bit. Or if we're lucky, we can time it to where he falls asleep for that time, that period of the transition uh, okay. and it helps. But if he's awake when, when we go through, like when we start climbing to 5,000 or so. It, yeah. Cause what we did with the baby is we just, you, you just go on Jessica's boo because obviously that motion, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And then I'm like, honey, my ears are uh, fucked. Yeah. I need to help. I need some <laughs> Yeah. Here's the other one. <laughs> you need to help. There's, a, there's another what one. What you there? do if you like, saw Walk back. My, my ears hurt. Husband on one and then a child on the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The padding is bad. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, she's like, what are you talking about? We're at home right now. I don't know, but I feel like the pressure changed. I feel something. like that would be a funny totally. clip, though, to catch everybody's reactions on the plane, like if you were doing that. No. <laughs> my God, what a creep. <laughs> <laughs> would you like a beverage, sir? I'm yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. What a weirdo. No, that's not cool. Hey, did you guys see this thing that they might be doing in San Jose where uh, it's like a pilot program hmm. where they're going to I guess they're going to offer these 0% loans so like they're, they're giving people money with no interest to build homes in their backyards. Oh, I did hear about that. What? Right? No. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, Maybe first, is it like a lottery? So there's only so many they're choosing? Or they're, how yeah, it's 20 to 30. So it's a pilot program. We'll see how well it works. And the idea is, so here's the deal. In the Bay Area, we have a, a shortage of, uh, of homes and a high demand. So that's why the property is so insanely, ridiculously expensive here. Like a track home in San Jose, which by the way, San Jose is not like this super great area. It's just like whatever, normal, normal place. A uh, track home will cost you one and a half to $2 million, like no problem. So I guess part of the idea is to increase the you know the, the availability of, of of homes and stuff, mm -hmm. and by building them in in backyards, I guess. So and this is a pilot program. <laughs> yeah. So. Now you brought up to me. We talked a little bit about this off air that. You're like this is gonna fail miserably because how pissed are you if you're a neighbor? Oh my god! To this yeah. person who builds in the backyard. But my argument idea. was, I imagine they do this somewhere like on East Side, where there's already like 30 people living in one track home house. As it is, I mean maybe, but you know um, that's already already one of the problems is 
is that they, if they want to build uh, housing, there's so many regulations and things that prevent. Yeah, like, why don't they just open to other areas that they can develop? I don't understand why they gotta like in San Jose, it. dude. Just I mean, you you drive in these like podunk areas. Why not just start developing podunk areas? Yeah, mm -hmm. and also and also here's the deal: when they try to build high density housing, if you so here's the deal: if you own a house in the Bay Area, you don't want the value of your house to go down. And you don't want your neighborhood to change at all. So it's in your best right. interest to prevent any kind of building. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it'll just lower your property value or maybe your neighborhood. I mean, the theoretically, yes. But when there's still more people trying to move in here. I mean, that's the argument that any any realtor tries to make in the Bay Area, even though it makes no sense investing-wise, like I've told you guys before, because it's like you can't rent it for what you're paying mm -hmm. mortgage-wise. The argument back that a realtor would say over here is that, well, the ne the thing is that there's so there's nowhere to develop anymore, mm. and so there's a, and there's more people trying to move in than move out, and so because of that, the, the you'll always see these prices continue to rise. So, mm. yeah, I don't I don't know if doing that would technically would drop the value of the the houses. Just gotta move a lot of the density into like Central Valley, you know, like move move the whole like uh, tech companies to kind of like skirt over there a little bit. Well. I mean, it's a real problem. It yeah. is a, a real problem. The rent, the the housing, it's just absolutely didn't, insane. Didn't California, I thought I just saw this on, uh, I don't know whose Instagram page you posted about, just uh, posted, and I don't, yeah, fact check me, Doug, uh, that this is the first time ever that California had more people leave than come in this this, la this yeah, past year. Yes. Yeah, we, we're definitely blessed. That's the first time that's ever happened, right? I mean, um, we, I don't know if it's the first time, but in a while. Is it's, it true that we we lost a seat because of that, or we may we may be losing maybe losing a seat, and then like Texas or whoever yeah. else is like gaining a seat? Yeah, because we're losing so many people. Mm. And and uh, and this, I'm sure this is not connected to our governor potentially getting recalled. Right, we'll see. But he's giving out free Wink. money. He's giving out free money to everybody. So we had a surplus of first taxes. time in over a hundred yeah. years. Yeah, I guess you're right. You're like six hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah, but but, he, but we had a surplus right of yeah. tax revenue. Yeah. So now he's like, hey, we're gonna give away free money to people and we're gonna give yeah. tax breaks to small businesses yeah. and oh, all this we're stuff. gonna lift the mask mandate dude i'm gonna uh, this, magically at this date because it's all gonna be totally different uh, then yeah. yeah you gotta love it when politicians that. start to worry they're like, free pizzas yeah. on wednesdays for everybody you know? <laughs> thanks you ever want your politicians to do stuff that you i guess that makes people happy just you know threaten to get them out of office and that's start, it man yeah they start to act and, and flex on them a bit and take care yeah <laughs> speaking of flexing adam you're looking pretty uh pretty jacked oh mm. thank you yeah. I, thought, uh, I thought yeah, now i know your weight's not going up though right you're getting leaner no i'm going down yeah i'm going down right now isn't so, that weird yeah well i mean it's all i figured that out i think i shared this before on the podcast the first time because i was on a, a permanent bulk for like the first you know 15 years of my weightlifting career uh and then the first time that i transitioned to like leaning out I thought, oh this is the first time where my body fat percentage is you know in the higher teens i'm gonna go down and i'll never forget uh hearing more compliments about uh, me looking bigger when I was going down. It's so funny because, you know, you're in, my insecurity was being the skinny. Like, right. Telling me that I was skinny or like, that would be like the worst thing you could say. I to, used to hate that too when uh, people, would, instead of saying lean, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you look like you got skinnier. Like, yeah. oh. Yeah, they're, you, they're like trying to be complimentary about right. it. And you're just like, really? Yeah, or you, ah, you look like you lost weights. weight. You look yeah. like you lost a bunch of weight. It's like, no, that's not what I was trying to do. Actually, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But I do remember that and going like, that is so weird. I'm getting all these like big compliments, compliments mm -hmm. and this is the smallest I had been in so many years. So, it's because when you're lean, you look look uh, bigger. I, same thing for me is, I mean, unless I have a sweater on or something like that, but if I'm in a t-shirt or whatever and I go to see a family member, they'll be like, oh man, you look like you got a lot bigger. I'm like, actually, yeah, it's I lost, that contrast, I lost seven pounds of body fat. Now, for me, the, the motivation is not looks at all. So I'm not, I'm actually trying to lean out because i um, battling like yeah, hip. You already have that covered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so you don't have to work on that. You just want to go too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not at all. Uh, why is because I still got the uh, golfer's elbow that I'm battling. Maybe um, you should stop golfing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that might not be it, actually. <laughs> uh, what I notice is, and this has been just for me, uh, when I carry myself over 220 uh, and I'm eating in a surplus, training heavy and stuff like that, I just tend to battle a lot of aches and pains. I just joint inflammation yeah. and just feeling that all the time. And I feel it in my elbow and I feel it in my hips uh, more often than I should. And, you know, I've been doing mobility work to try and adjust it, but it's still, it feels like this back and forth thing. It's like, oh, it makes me feel temporarily good. Are you under 220 now? Uh, I'm down to about 220 right now. So I was coming from 225. I mean, I was all the way at 230 something when we mm -hmm. did the, uh, when we weighed in. I weighed just the other night, just two nights ago was the last time I got on the scale. 
And I was 221 in the evening, which makes me think I'm probably 219 or maybe as low as 218. That's what I would guess, right? Yeah, in the morning. So I actually got away. I'll see. I mean, I'm like, again, I'm not hung up on the weight or any of that stuff I'm, or how I look. It's I'm waiting for me to feel better as far now, as. Now, because, I, you know, earlier episodes, you were talking about how maybe uh, too much red meat, especially. Yeah. Not grass-fed red meat yeah. was causing uh, could cause uh, psoriasis for you or, or or make it flare up. What are you doing with like your like What are you doing with your like your butcher box orders? Are you switching it to chicken or is it like what, like what are you so, doing? With that? So technically, my order our, our boxes is always been a nice like we actually get more chicken than anything else. Chicken and bacon and uh th th those are some of the the mm. big things that I get consistently. Mm -hmm. It was actually I was eating more red meat. Because when I was only eating meat, red meat has got the most nutrients, right? The right. most nutrient dense food that I could get. And just if you if you ate chicken and turkey all the time, you'd be missing a lot. Mm -hmm. So I was actually eating a ton of red meat when we when I first started the you know carnivore esque diet, and I, w I initially what I felt a little bit better, which now I look back and go, oh, that was probably just the reduction of calories that I felt that way because my psoriasis actually wasn't getting better. I was finding myself actually itching more and I thought that was really interesting. I switched away from eating so much red meat, switched over to turkey and to um, like fish and, and stuff like that and chicken, right? And I started to notice that I started to get better. So now I have a, a way, way more of a blend mm -hmm. and the red meat consumption is reduced quite a bit. And then the only red meat I'm having is my, you know, grass fed yeah. butcher box. Yeah, I'm down Are now. you snacking like uh, mm -hmm. in between? I just found, okay, so I'm, I've been doing this too for the last like two or three days, but I have to like, because the calories are lower and, you know, when, when you sit down and you have like, you know, two pounds, three pounds of meat, you know, for a meal, it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. So I've been trying to spread it out more uh, and have more like I, I'm up to, I do like five, maybe six meals a day now instead of like just spread the meat. Yes. <laughs> Got to spread that meat. <laughs> Got to spread that meat. Well, stuff. I've now introduced a lot more things back in. Right. So, I mean, rice is consistently. I actually just last night I had uh, white potatoes uh, for the first time since I've been uh, back on this. Um, I introduced uh quinoa pasta uh, the other day um so i've been like doing that like intermittently i'll introduce a new food kind of see how i feel a little bit and then and good then go back to like more meat and then so and so far i haven't introduced to anything else that is like really f made my psoriasis flare up or bother me and i've been feeling really really good uh except for when i was eating all red meat i thought that was really interesting that that did that, that happened so i had to cut back on it that's interesting mm. yeah my my weight is down now i'm i'm under now uh 210 so which for me now is getting leaner and jessica's same component oh you look like you're getting bigger which is hilarious but speaking of diet you guys know that they did this big meta analysis on vegans and mm -hmm. they found some very, and this is like causing a bit of controversy. There's a bit of an oh. uproar over what they found. You want to hear what they found? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, check this out. So researchers reviewed 18 studies. So this is like a big analysis of different studies, which involved over 160,000 participants. So in basically to, to summarize, here's what they found. Vegetarians are twice as likely to take medication for mental illness. They're nearly three times as likely to consider suicide. They show significantly higher rates of depression, anxiety, or self-harm behaviors. And generally, vegetarians demonstrated poor psychological health, while meat eaters exhibited better psychological health. Wow. Interesting, right? That is interesting. Now, the question is- I can is, see how that pisses off all I, Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I it doesn't, that. that doesn't mean if you're a vegetarian or vegan that, that, that that's true for you. It just means that, the, that they found in, these, in this meta-analysis that- that people who ate this way were more likely. Now, here's the question. You guys remember the cannabis study I brought up in one of the last episodes where uh -huh. I said, you know, that they said cannabis causes this. And you're like, which one is it, the chicken or the egg? You know, yeah. is it, you know, is it that people who are, you know, uh, m more depressed likely to smoke cannabis or does cannabis cause the depression, right? right? Same thing here. So, so the question is, is that they're eating uh, this diet causing these things or is it that people- The people who, that are going into the diet. Yeah, or tend to fall in this category. So those are the, those are the two things and there's, there's evidence potentially for both. So one of them is because when you eat a diet that's especially vegan, so vegan means no animal product whatsoever, right? That, that uh, the, the rate of nutrient deficiencies is much higher, right? Because you have to eat- a good, well-rounded combination of foods to make up for nutrients that you would get in just like a piece of uh, of ground, you know, steak or, or ground beef. 
And those nutrient deficiencies can definitely increase the risk of a lot of those things that we talked about. Depression, anxiety, um, all these things. Then the other, on the other end, researchers are saying, but here's the other thing. People who tend to be anxious or depressed or have these issues, they tend to find ways of, con- of, of, of finding control in their lives. So they're also more likely to have mm. eating disorders or more likely to do this. So one way of finding control would be to be like, here's my strict, you know, right. my structure. Very, very strict. Yeah, regimented diet. And mm. so I'm just going to follow this. So very interesting, right? Mm. So there's a lot of kind of hubbub going on around you know, this whole thing. Yeah, I'm sure that pissed off a lot of people that were... Well, I mean, it, it, look, you can get as mad as you want. It's just the studies said yeah, that. Just, so it's, Right, what it's they've not, revealed. It's right. a, I got something to share with you guys. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. It dropped on um, Prime, I believe. Uh, I, you know, Sal was the one that got me paying attention to that, how Prime does the... Uh, it releases these, like, would have been in theater, and you, oh, can, yeah. you can buy them. Um, they just dropped uh, the documentary on Sesame Street. Yeah, really cool. Really good. Yeah. Did you watch it? I watched most of it. Yeah. Did yeah. you like it? I thought it was really interesting. Oh, Very I grew up with Sesame Street. So did I. Yeah. That yeah. was Sesame Street and uh, Electric Company and uh, what's the other one? Mr. Rogers. Okay, so, so who was your favorite character? On what? Sesame Street. Oscar oh, the Grouch. Oh, you like oh, Oscar? Oh, yeah. I loved, yeah, so uh, do yeah. I. I loved Oscar. How about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I liked Oscar. I liked, uh, um, what was the the count? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 One, one, a two. Uh, uh, uh. It was really, it was, it was really revolutionary for its time. Like what, totally. the idea of what they were trying to do and what I thought was really cool was, and we're kind of in this right now with tech. What do we talk about all time about being worried about our kids being glued to tech and, and scrolling on social media? Yeah, because there was a lot of worry about TV. That, yeah. That numbers were coming out showing that kids were spending a tremendous of time in front of TV. And so the, the, the strategy was, look, we're not going to get kids to not watch TV. Mm-hmm. Why not? present them with good information better, better programming but yeah. using the same tactics that are used in commercials back then yeah mm-hmm. so that was the idea was you know we and what i think what promoted it was they were saying that kids were like singing like you know budweiser and and, and <laughs> cigarette and cigarette jingles and that's what they were looks like and of course you had some parents i'm sure that were you know appalled by that yeah and then you see the bubblegum cigarettes yeah and remember big league chew yeah, and it's yeah. like dude yeah. what are we doing yeah. you know yeah but that's what what motivated <laughs> Candy to, to do this exactly. and they and the, a lot of people thought they were crazy it would never take off kids wouldn't like it but they actually applied those same jingle and short snippets like as as content to you know hook kids in hmm. and it just it took off it was now here's out. what's interesting about, about this right so it was on uh pbs right public broadcasting is it service i think it was yeah um public it was public tv so this was government funded yeah TV and TV programming. So I get torn, right? Because look, here's the deal. Um, I typically oppose to that kind of stuff because we don't, it doesn't, it's not following a market, I guess, demand. However, it did succeed in the market. In fact, mm-hmm. Sesame Street became one of the Dude, most popular. PBS had some of the best programming. It became incredibly popular, yeah. right? So it was all um, educational too. It was like, wholesome like good morals yeah. well, and, and yeah. sesame street was the beginning of that yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. there was nothing before no. there was there was nothing like that on tv before it was all all you know what it was all content was all centered around advertising mm. it was what shows would hook people in watching enough and then how could we insert yeah. as many commercials as we could i actually I, th- I think i remember seeing too that they developed like uh serials around these cartoons and so they would sure. actually like yeah they would engineer that that whole thing was like you'd, mm. you know because action figures were big you know back then and, and so they would develop all these ideas based off of like how they're going to sell that yeah uh, i also yeah, did yeah. you not get a feeling of i mean uh, i it, uh, it made me feel good about what we do right because when i think about the motivation behind what we were creating right we, obviously we weren't going after kids but we looked at like same the, thing the fitness space yes. and the, the content that was being provided and around. use those same strategies That's right to present good information right because yeah. you can't you got to beat them at their own game if, yeah. if you don't win their the attention you're going to present all the great information in the world uh but you're not going to do anything totally yeah speaking of amazon prime though i i mean this one's totally like more in your wheelhouse sal um, but uh, there was this, it's a movie, I guess it's, it's, it, the format's kind of strange, but it's, uh, you ever seen the movie, um, men who stare at goats, 
No, I haven't seen that. But okay, I know what so it's about. this is like this is like sort of the science behind all of that in terms of like all the government programs for parapsychology mm-hmm. and for like noetic science and all this like crazy out there stuff that are like it's it's called superhuman, uh, like the the invisible turn visible or something. But it basically is just describing a lot of like really out there concepts, but like doing it in a really scientific way uh, and showing showing how like each cell has its own vibration vibrational noise and, and they, they, they they bring it into the lab and they show you all these things oh, i want to watch and, this and, and, this is on yeah and they show this this one lady that that just shows like everybody like it, like how you can affect um the ph of water just by like really concentrating and and putting your intention over it and then they actually measured it and everything and what? so did they really yes okay so are you guys familiar with i, I might have talked about this a long it's time obviously ago. you're transferring that energy into the water so right? there's this that's... research that was done by this japanese yeah. scientist and i can't remember his name it's it's a it's famous study um and it's controversial study but what he would do is is people would have some kind of an intention over water so he had water that monks and priests would pray over Mm -hmm. he had water that would be present when people were arguing he'd have water that people are yelling at like all these all these different things and then they would freeze the water Mm -hmm. and then they would look at the ice crystals that would form from this particular water and there were distinct differences in the water that was presented with negative information mm-hmm. versus the water that was pre- Dude, present. So with, you're going to like this. Oh, thing. Masaro Emoto. You so can look him up. Justin, you'll like this. Yeah. The next time you're over at Tina's, go in the refrigerator and open it and go look at the water in there. Okay. She actually had, and they, I, I've got it. I can't think of the name for the life of me right well, now. Well, th- this is like a lot of the stuff like she talks about, like it, it's all the science behind all of that. It's really fascinating. And, and it talks about consciousness and, and, and then it kind of describes like how, how basically like we how we affect each other and how we get entangled with other consciousnesses oh, and wow. so you could actually like and this is how they they explain remote viewing mm. and so that was a big that was a big part of the the research that uh, they didn't want to basically publicly display how effective it is okay so th- during the cold war we invested a significant amount of money in uh, this type of stuff yes remote viewing the soviets did too yeah and the stati- now this is what they released right this is not so i don't know if this is how accurate this is but what they released was that the remote viewer, so you know what a remote viewer is? This is somebody like, let's say you and I are remote viewers. We're these para, you know, uh, we're these uh, hey, paranormal. You talk to the other side, right? No, not talk to the other side. We would use our, you know, whatever powers, uh, our psychic abilities, and we would tell the U.S. government where missile yeah. uh, the exact silos location were. Of where, yeah, the missiles they were mil- hiding. Military bases. And they invested, they actually spent quite a bit of money on this. And from what they released, it was... A hundred percent accurate. It, not not a hundred percent. Really? Is that, yes. Here's what I read: that it was it was better than than the the statistically. Again, they downplayed random. it, but like it, it, maybe they're wrong in this in this movie. But they said it was like a hundred percent accurate, and, and wow. they pulled the program. Well, it was de- what they released. Because, it was definitely better than random. Right. So I think it was Carter or somebody that basically pulled the whole program of like trying to to move and hide these missiles because they knew that like so the Soviets were also doing the same thing in like some other countries. And so they're like, well, they're just going to find them anyways. I watched one where this, this, I think it was a woman where she was doing it and she would just draw, right? So she'd do this the thing and then she would draw mm-hmm. and, and she's like, I don't know where this is. And so then the, si- the the researchers would have to kind of figure it out and be like, that looks like, you know, a place in Iowa. And then they would go there and sure enough, a what? fucking picture yeah. matched the, th- the place that they found. Yeah. Like how weird is that, right? Yeah, it's hella weird. It's, uh, very strange. It's bizarre. But again, it's like I, I appreciated it just because it was like more of the actual like they tested all these theories. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hey, before we transition to the to the questions, uh, there's some shout outs that we want to. Oh yeah, Douglas, our- what's up? Our firefighters, what's up? Yeah. yeah, we got some firefighters in Owasso, Oklahoma, Woo-hoo. and paramedics. Uh, we also have the Bladensburg Fire Department in Prince George's County, Maryland. Yeah. All right. So thank Maryland you. Shout out to Oklahoma. You thank you very much for all that you do. Yes. Uh, thank you, guys. Guys and girls. And you girls. Got, yeah, you guys save lives and put your lives at risk, and thank you very, very much. Love you guys. Hey, stop. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides. They cost nothing, and they teach you all the secrets about fitness. Mindpumpfree.com. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first question is from A.U. Bon. I have worked on my rear delts two times a week for three years, but they just won't grow. Any tips? Oh, man. Okay. More than almost any other body part. So Mm. first off, the rear delts obviously is a part of the shoulder that's in the back. 
It's very responsible for giving you round-looking shoulders. A lot of people don't know this. They work the side delts a lot, thinking it's going to give them this kind of round, what they call caps. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, and, and I was lucky to figure this out when I was young, um, and I know Adam talks about this all the time when he was competing, you develop the rear delt, and it gives you this. That's what gives you the shoulder, this yeah. kind of round look. Um, now, here's the thing with the with the rear delts. Almost always, when people have issues developing it, obviously if they're training it frequently and the volume is good, the problem is connection. Yep. Mm -hmm. They go they go and do a rear delt exercise, and it becomes a rhomboid or trap right. exercise. Very very. People have a tough time just they end working. Up pinching their shoulder blades together and going too far. Yeah, I, I love this. This was like, and this took me a, a while to piece together. Um, and I 100% agree. I think uh, if you put, I, I even went on a kick for a while where I started all shoulder workouts with rear delt yeah, work. So did I. And I, and I and I highly recommend that to whoever's you know if you're listening and this is your question. This is uh, start with your rear delt exercises and and pay extra attention to the technique because it's a small it's a small part of the, of a muscle so it's you're trying to target an area that it's very easy like Sal said for a bigger back muscle to take care of take over the movement mm -hmm. and it looks when you just look at somebody doing a rear delt fly it's really hard unless you really understand biomechanics to see the difference between a good one and a bad one Someone doing a good rear delt fly, it, there's it's just a very slight angle. Exactly, there's a slight difference, and I and I have some good videos on our YouTube channel because this is something that I addressed a couple of years ago, uh, showing some of my favorite. It's a great video. Some of my favorite exercises for rear delts. One of my favorite uh, to, for that is um, a, and I don't even know what I would call it, like a, a rear delt fly, a bent over rear delt fly on like a free motion or a cable machine, mm -hmm. and I like this because. The cable actually pulls you through, which kind of puts you in that forward shoulder position, which is, this is advantageous for trying to work the rear delts. The mistake that people make is they retract, mm -hmm. and then that once you retract the shoulder blade, then the, the back comes in to help out. So you actually want to stay in this kind of forward position, and I like being bent over with the cable because it's pulling you in that position, and then when you fly back, I don't say fly back, I say fly out. Yep. And you're so you're pulling out and away, which kind of gives the cue of keeping it in the rear delt and not allowing the back to kick in. Because if you come back with it, the back takes over the movement. Yeah, now the other part of that that's important is to keep the elbow up and high. What you'll, what'll end up happening, is, especially when you're going too heavy, is you get this kind of external rotation with the elbows. And it starts to become this weird looking kind of row or fly elbow out. So you're kind of pulling way out. And it's a smaller range of motion than you think. Very it's small. not this huge wide range of motion. Now, if you're looking for function, um, and you want to strengthen the, you know, some of the muscles of the back, then yeah, you want to do this real wide kind of full range of motion. But if you're looking to develop this particular muscle, it's not responding well, go light and then focus on really feeling that muscle and, and especially what Adam uh, has said in terms of the technique. And then it'll start to develop and it'll develop just like the rest of your shoulder. It's just a lot of people when they do these exercises, it's all back exercises. So they yeah. do the flies, but they don't. They I don't think, do yeah, it. the setup is crucial, I think. And, and to your point of like having that cable, like kind of putting you into that position helps a ton. I've, I've figured that out because I used to take it, uh, you know, the opposite way. I'd put myself in like optimal posture, right? And so I'm like retracting my shoulders. I'm getting myself upright. Uh, and, and in this instance, you know, in order to really target it, it's not going to be advantageous. Next question is from DM Caruso 93. How would you guys recommend incorporating neck training into a routine? Neck training. You guys ever work out? Like, I mean, you play football, so yeah. I'm assuming you guys did uh, yeah, but, a lot of neck training. So we we did, but um, also that wasn't a big emphasis. Um, and we we would start out as like sort of warm up drills. Where we'd have a partner sort of kind of applying pressure to one side, and we do isometrics with it. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, for the, the neck training stuff's a little sketchy to me in terms of like what I feel comfortable with training a client with. With, even if they're an athlete, uh, and and just the constant load and, and, and what I had to account for having a helmet on for the entire practice did a ton for me in terms of like building my neck strength and then also like just just deadlifting, you know, yeah. like by itself. So, um, you know, I, I tend to steer people away from this whole like isolating neck specific type exercising. Yeah, no, you have to have like any exercise, good technique, good form, and you have to be very careful because one of the weakest body parts that we have and one of the body parts that has some of the worst dysfunction is the neck. Forward head 
is a big deal. And yeah. so if you have forward head and then you train your neck and do mm. neck exercises with this dysfunction, you're asking for you're add a lot more problems. Yeah, you're asking for neck uh, pain and problems. So the way that I would train the neck initially, if you've never worked your neck out, is by working on getting better posture. Yeah, I would do like chin tucks. Yeah, yeah, like the wall test, right? Like in, in Maps Prime, where you're Perfect. up against the wall and you create those points of contact. You push that 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 nodule at the bottom of your of your skull into the wall, and you do what's called like traction, where you're trying to elevate your neck, you're trying to elongate your neck and press back at the same time. Strengthen your neck with these exercises first. Get good function. Mm -hmm. Then you can move more to these like traditional strength training exercises where your neck where, by the way, don't use any weight at all unless you already have a strong functional neck. But it's as easy as like literally, you know, leaning forward and, you know, you know, bringing your head back or leaning on your back and bringing your chin forward or going side to side. Now, here's the cool thing. Uh, once you have good function, everything's moving right. The neck develops very quickly. So if you have like a pencil neck or, or whatever, and you need a bigger, stronger neck, that for some reason that muscle, in my experience, just develops very, very quickly. So I, I love uh, to progress the wall. I would start somebody first of all. Never did w with weights for people. I think it's a bad idea for mm -hmm. most people, and it's just the risk versus reward in it. And like Justin that, said, that's it, where I'm at. If you're playing a sport, you just carrying the helmet around and doing that's going to be enough. To Sal's point, if you get really strong and you already have excessive forehead, you're only going to strengthen that, right? Mm -hmm. and make that worse. So I would start with the wall test, which is just the basic chin tucks where you're getting that down. And then to progress that, I would actually do it off the floor. So head lifts off the floor. So you lay face down. And so obviously gravity's working against you and you're just lifting. Yeah, you're not looking up. Yeah, you're not looking up. You're just lifting the head up into neutral spine and then holding. I'd hold for five seconds, yeah, relax. Mm -hmm. Lift the head up, hold hold for about five seconds. And I'll tell you what, it's that's work. It's, it's yeah. just, just the weight of the head and then trying to lift your head up into neutral spine and that isometric hold, you're going to develop mm -hmm. some strength in the neck and I there's mean, a lot less risk. There are some interesting products now that look like they're a little safer options in terms of adding resistance where, I don't know if it's called the halo yeah i saw that with okay the, yeah. it, it, joe rogan did, did a did commercial for him, yeah i've seen defranco do some stuff with it that that did make sense but again uh the prerequisites is you know making sure you have that proper function you, mm -hmm. you can put you can stack your your spine in good alignment uh uh and, and you, you understand how to put yourself in a good position first before we start adding stress 100 percent. i'd say you know 99 percent of the people watching this or listening to this right now like work on neck function that's a, all the workout that you need it will strengthen your neck it'll but it'll also strengthen and develop good function then from there which will take you a while so it's not like you do it for a week and like now i can go you know load my neck do it for a while till your neck feels really strong you've got the movement down you've got great function then you can start working on some light loading i mean back in the day when i was doing a lot of grappling mm. i remember we would have these wrestlers that would come in to train with us and they taught me how to neck bridge, and then I would do, mm -hmm. I'd roll all the way back to my nose, and I'd walk. Wrestlers went crazy. With oh, that oh I did all kinds of stuff on my neck. Now, here's the thing. I didn't understand neck function, so I just did all this shit. Well, now I have terrible yeah. neck mobility, rotational mobility, and I 100% blame me doing all that crazy stuff without having the, the prerequisites before. Oh, yeah. I remember doing, like, just getting in the clinch and when I was in Muay Thai for a bit uh, and just getting pulled all over the place. And, oh, man, I'd be sore for weeks. Yeah. Oh, and a sore neck is the worst thing. Oh, it's the worst thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, wor it's way worse than sore legs. Yeah. Yeah. You have a sore neck, your day sucks. Next question is from Marissa White, 750. Can you please explain insulin resistance? You know, this is a big, big issue in uh, in modern societies. This uh, this contributes to obesity, inflammation, heart disease, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, dementia. It's a big issue. And in a nutshell, without getting too complicated, what it essentially means is the insulin that your body is producing isn't working as well in your body. It's like... You need more insulin to do the same job that less insulin used to do. So what ends up happening with your body is it produces more and more insulin and your body becomes more and more resistant. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, downstream, what is that? That's diabetes, right? right. Yeah. You, Would you consider that like pre-diabetic uh, like uh, symptoms? Yes. And in fact, you know, now researchers are saying, because they'll, they'll measure your fasting glucose and say, oh, it looks like you might be developing some insulin resistance. Now researchers are saying it starts way earlier than they thought, mm -hmm. where it can even start as a kid. Um, and then it takes you know years to really turn into full blown uh, insulin resistance. So I guess the the second part of this, the important part of this, is how do we avoid insulin resistance, or how do we make our body become 
more sensitive to insulin. This is what the the, the low carb zealots attach a lot of their 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 research, the stuff they talk about uh, to the research around this, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and 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 you know then you have people like our friend Lane who will who challenge it strongly, and I, and I agree with Lane when he challenges this. The only thing I don't like is I think it's a bad message to present to people because this is where. Yeah, uh, eating so much carbohydrates, uh, and and I think as as a whole, our society does that so much that it can lead to this path. And so I know he tries to debunk a lot mm -hmm. of the the material that the low carb zealots use about insulin resistance. Uh, but at the same time, too, I think their intentions to try and get people to eat less sugar and to reduce their carbohydrate intake is an overall good message. For it me. is, but it's really okay. So you can develop insulin resistance on a low carb diet. There's mm -hmm. there's connections between insulin resistance, although it's a lot and less likely. It is, but there, but my point is they've shown insulin resistance developing with a high fat diet. Now here's the thing that they all have in common: high, high calories, calories, right? right? Yep. You eat a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar, and your calories are always high. Um, and then, of course, you combine that with inactivity. Now the risk goes up. Here's the biggest risk. The biggest risk is lack of muscle. In fact, yes. building muscle, regardless of body weight, so you can even be obese, building muscle is one of the best, most effective things you can do. It's your best protection. Improving insulin resistance. So if, you, if, you, if it runs in your family, diabetes runs in your family, if insulin resistance is a concern of yours, build muscle. Your muscle is like one of the most effective bulwarks against... You know, uh, insulin resistance. It's a very insulin sensitive tissue. It stores some sugars and carbohydrates. Um, when you work out, you know, it's it it it, it, low, it, re it increases your insulin sensitivity. Well, isn't this isn't this directly connected to the amount of time that the body takes to take a carbohydrate and convert it into sugar? Right. Part of it. And now, it. and then when you come insulin resistance, it, it accelerates that dramatically. Is that the, the opposite? Of I mean, it's it's all kind of connected. It's it's probably a little more complex than that, but it's it's well, literally. Yeah, we're, we're always looking for a simpler way to explain it to the audience. So yeah, I, I would say you know really it's just your your. I mean, just to put it in a nutshell, it's just it's insulin stops doing its job, right? So you eat carbohydrates or sugar, insulin goes up to drive that into areas of storage, whether it be body fat or muscle or the liver. And so if you have more muscle, you have more place to store it. That's part of it, right? And then, of course, muscle itself, increase, just on its own, increases insulin sensitivity. It's by far the best thing you could do. In fact, when they put men on, and I know this from talking to uh, you know uh, certain doctors, when they put men on testosterone replacement therapy, because when a man has low testosterone, he loses muscle, and when they raise his testosterone – he tends to add muscle, regardless if he's working out or not, right? Because it's a, it's a hormone driver. By doing so, when the muscle comes on their body, they notice better numbers. Insulin resistance goes down and sensitivity goes up. So then, I mean, obviously, you have a client. You're training them. You, you They go to their doctor. doctor comes back tells them that they're insulin resistant. You, as a trainer, obviously, you're already on a program to build the muscle because that's mm -hmm. part of your job. What are you coaching them on diet? What are you saying to them different about their diet? I'm reducing carbohydrates now. Yeah. I mean, and and, and calories. Uh, reducing carbohydrates and calories. But you know, here's the thing with reducing carbohydrates: when you already have insulin resistance, it's almost like you're solving the problem, but not the root necessarily. It's like now we're at this place. So now reducing carbohydrates makes a big difference, but really what would have fixed it is if we just made your body yeah. more sense. This is why, like people with like Alzheimer's and dementia. You put them on a ketogenic diet and their cognition improves. It's not necessarily because the carbs in their diet were, were make, having the problems. It's because their body doesn't utilize the carbs very well anymore. Mm -hmm. And it needs ketones now to operate you know, much better. So again, the best thing you can do is build muscle. Next question is from Fulvio the Castle. Does pain tolerance improve along with strength training? I think your your ability to uh, disseminate uh, good and bad pain right it, it totally improves when you I start think to work that's out. really what it is is yeah. you, you understand better like what these uh, signals are like so if there's a burn you know you don't you don't freak out like if there's you know a soreness and achiness like you can identify that this mm -hmm. was a result of you know something you did with the workout versus like you know a really sharp like lightning type of response of pain that was uh you know something you should really pay attention to yeah, i guess i would ask what kind of pain tolerance are we talking about i mean are, is it muscle soreness pain or acute pain like what kind of pain are you, are you i would say the pain that comes from exercise your mm. tolerance goes up like think about when you would get a new yeah. client like pain from a breakup yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean do, that too does it really or does your body just adapt and so the same things the same things that offended it before don't offend it well as no much. because you work yourself out harder like i i would bet you that you do sets you you do sets as 
you became more advanced that were way more painful than when you were sure, a beginner. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you know when you train a new client, ever happened to you where you train a new client and they're doing an exercise and they never lifted weights or worked out before. Yeah. And then they burn a little bit yeah. and they're like, ah. they, it's like, oh my God, what is this? Yeah, I can't yeah. even yeah, tolerate it. I had this. clients drop weights before. <laughs> yeah. like, so have I. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was burning my biceps. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I had this experience with my, with my daughter. So my daughter, she's only 11. So occasionally I'll do a workout with her. And I remember we did some leg exercises for the first time and it's really hard to gauge if I'm going too hard or not hard enough. And so, you know, the first workout I might get her sore, right? And I remember the next day she wakes up and she's calling me from her room for school. Bah, bah. So I walk in there. I'm like, what's the matter, honey? She's like, I, I hurt my leg. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh shit, what happened? Where does it hurt? And she's like pointing to her quads. She's like, I'm, I'm injured. And so I'm like moving her around. I'm like, no, honey, you're sore. Mm -hmm. Like you don't know what it feels like yeah, yeah. to have this kind of soreness. So I think it's really, it's, it's about how you perceive it, what it feels like. Because I could now, because I've been working out for so long, I can tolerate you know, burn. I can tolerate the pain from working out. Mm -hmm. I know the difference between the good kind of pain when I work out, the bad kind of pain. But if you don't train, it's it's all just pain. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's really hard for you to kind of, you know. I, I also would caution somebody though here too because, you know, you, you don't have to go through so much pain either to to train and get the body to adapt. Right, yeah. I, that was a mistake that, you know, I had that you know, no pain, no gain uh, mentality as a, as a young- And the more pain, the better. Yeah, yeah. and then I was seeking the, that soreness, or oh, it's so, and we talk about how great it is to feel that way, and so you are chasing that for a long period, where I'm the opposite now. I'll mm -hmm. start training- and I feel like, ooh, yeah, that's I'm I'm there, you know, mm -hmm. like that. That's a, if I do another set, I'm gonna be more sore than I ever need. I can tell yeah. in a workout. So I, I'm not like pushing through pain and going like, oh, I have no. five more sets. Like you actually don't need to train yeah. this way. I think you're that's thinking of, about net tomorrow. Yeah, like, like what's gonna happen tomorrow? Can I replicate what I'm doing today mm -hmm. tomorrow? And it, I try and keep that in mind now all the time when I'm working out, and it's so much more effective. And my body will adapt and change and get all those desired results. You know, much quicker that way. And I'm not just like putting myself, you know, under the gun and then now I have to heal from what I just did. Yeah. As a trainer, I changed my vernacular when I would talk to clients. I stopped using the word pain. I would use discomfort. I'd mm -hmm. say, you know, we want, you're definitely going to feel discomfort yeah. exercising and stretching and doing things because that discomfort is gets what gets your body to adapt. That's right. But I wouldn't use pain because again, if you don't know, like, you know, we work out all, you know, for, for years, we know like the right amount of pain. You say pain to the average person, especially the message, no pain, no gain. Right. And you get the super motivated, like, I just want to lose weight tomorrow person. They're going to go hard for the pain, and, way too much. And you only need to be in that discomfort for a, a short minute. Yeah. You don't need to keep pushing beyond that. Like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, you changing the vernacular or whatever. I mean, when you get to that point where you feel it from that workout, like, you're probably pretty close to done doing five, six more sets or another exercise. I mean, that's the overreaching part that I, right. I think I made that mistake for many years. Yeah, is it is it is it more discomfort than you're used to, right? So if you yeah. sit on your couch all day long, 10 sets of body weight squats, like we're probably going to get your muscles to change a little bit. If you work out all the time, five days a week and you lift weights, well, there's a whole different level of discomfort that you that's probably right. have to have to achieve in order to get your body to change. Look, if you like this information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have so many free guides that can help you there. Fat loss guides, muscle building guides, guides for personal trainers, a ton. Go to mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I actually stopped even getting them to use the hotel gyms because they were so different, right? Like mm -hmm. what they offered. And so I stopped even worrying about trying to figure that out totally. for, and just said, what I'm going to do is write you a, a body weight type of routine for you in your room. And then it's easier too for them not to make an excuse not to get it. They ain't got to go down to another yeah. floor. Right. 